And then the cat has two catios. She's got one here. Catio. <laughs> she's got a catio here, and then she's got one over on the driver's side, out the driver's window. This is my biggest project ever. In fact, when all of this was finally done, I sat up on the, the edge of my bed and I looked forward and I went, this is the nicest fort I have ever built. You know, and yeah. I, I started to cry. I was like, I can't believe I did this, yeah. you know? If I can do yeah. this, then yeah. anybody can learn anything. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. I am here with Renee. Hi Renee. Hi. And we're standing in front of your beautiful bus. Yes, this is Gladys. Gladys the bus, <laughs> I see. It looks like you've done a phenomenal amount of work in here. A bit, yes, a bit. <laughs> and so how long have you been on the road? Mm, I've been living in Gladys for about a year and a half. This is the farthest I've been from home. It took me about 11 months to, to finish. And then um, I had a little bit of a detour and here I am. Well, let's go ahead and go inside and check it out. Okay. So Renee, tell us a little about, uh, bit about Gladys, the bus itself. Okay, well Gladys um, is my grandmother's name. And so I always knew even before I had a bus, when I got one, that was gonna be what I was going to name her. And then my other grandmother, um, she's responsible for taking us camping all the time and the love of outdoors. And uh, when she passed, my Aunt Gail kept the sign out of her RV. So her name was Genevieve, but they called her Johnny. And so it's Johnny's Roadhouse now goes with me. So it's sort of an homage to both my grandmothers. And tell us a little bit about the bus, the age and... The bus is a 2006 International. Um, I believe it's a DT365 engine with mm -hmm. an Allison six-speed transmission. Sounds very good. <laughs> and uh, she's got cruise control, which works on the flat, but not on the hills. Yeah. <laughs> she gets about 8.6 miles per gallon, unless it's downhill, and then she gets 12. And how long is it? Uh, she's 25 feet, and then I had a uh, two and a half foot back deck welded on. And uh, how much of this work did you do yourself or did you hire it out? I did, I hired out the electrical and my friend Dean helped me with the plumbing. And I have a friend, John, who helped me. He, he knows about engines. And so when I went to go look at the bus, I took him with me and he knew what we were looking for or what I was looking for. And so, um, but everything else, yeah, I hauled everything in here. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it had a handicap lift in the back, and so all the heavy things I would put on the lift, and then I would just kind of shimmy mm -hmm. everything. And I started building from the front to the back, so because I knew I was going to take out that lift. And so I, I used it as long as I could. And then uh, another friend of mine, um, Regan, helped me take that out. I was lucky enough to have enough space left for a queen-size bed. Yes. So I was happy about that. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. And why a schoolie? There's lots of choices you could have made. Why did you choose a schoolie? Well, um, I actually thought that I might want a tiny home, but I couldn't afford one. So I was just kind of going down the list of something that I could afford. And schoolies were less expensive than vans. And, and I didn't want an RV. I wanted right. something that was unique to me. And... I like to create things, so I wanted to create a space that I enjoyed being in, as well as taking somewhere else. Several of my clients all said, why don't you just get an RV, you'd be done. I'm like, cause it's just not, it's just not personal. Yeah. So it's not fun, it's fun for me. So why don't you uh, lead us around and show us what you've done and what your thinking was. Okay, well, um, the wood stove was, um, I, it was a must have. If I was going to have, um, a home that looked like a home to me, I wanted a fireplace. And so there's a little company in Northern Idaho called um, tinywoodstove.com and they make these for mobile units or small cabins. And they supply plenty of videos and uh, how to's and the calculations on how much you need and what you need for what. And so I just saturated myself with information and you know, as soon as you cut that hole, it's like, okay, that's the point of no return. Yeah, so, yeah, no going back. so I took a picture um, of the sky. I know it was a cloudy day. I took a picture once I drilled that great big hole out and, and said, okay, here we go. And luckily, you know, everything lined up. It's, uh, it's bolted into this piece of granite. And that of course is bolted to the cabinet and the cabinet's bolted to the floor. So this, um, was one of my favorite lampshades. So I brought it with me 
and it comes off the back um, when I use the fireplace because obviously that would melt and all the pictures and everything come off. But when I'm not using it, I use it as a faux lamp. <laughs> It's full of fairy lights and stuff in there I can turn on at night. It got me through a Boise winter last year, wow. that little wood stove. That was an accomplishment. Yeah, but the smaller the stove, the more often you have to feed it. But it, it was nice. The cat will curl up right next to the fire. It's, it's just very cozy, and I'm so glad that I put it in. And it solves the problem of uh, propane or any other fuel of moisture. Yes, but I do have a backup um, Mr. Buddy in case I need it. And I put it in the front because I wanted to be able to see it from anywhere mm -hmm. in the bus, too. In case people write you and say, well, she doesn't have a heat shield. Yes, I do. I have a beautiful, big copper, oh. copper plate that I hang from the ceiling um, as a, a heat shield when I need it. I found it on eBay. It's just gorgeous. I wanted something really cool. So this it hangs is. behind there. Isn't that cool? It is. It's beautiful. And when I do use the wood stove, there's a stove pipe in the back that extends up the top. Oh. Because it's not, what's there isn't high enough. And um, the next thing that really catches my eye is this beautiful oh, countertop. Isn't that gorgeous? It, that's live wood? Yes, wow. it is. It's uh, maple. I uh, was in one of my favorite wood stores at home. I saw this leaning up against the wall. It was all rough and stuff when I first saw it. I knew I wanted a live edge and um, it was probably more than I should have paid, but I'm so glad I did it because yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just something gorgeous. It's something treasure your whole life. Yeah. And then I had to, oh. um, I taught myself or had to cut out the spot for the sink and I knew I wanted a, a big sink because a lot of the RV people said that their sink was not big enough. So I have a nice big deep sink. That's but it, a big sink. Yeah. It doesn't take it. It's not a huge footprint. So I still have plenty of room. And then this is a cutting board. And you did all this yourself? I did all this myself. Wow. I learned work. undermount technique. I mean, it was YouTube University for months and months. It yeah. was so much fun. This <laughs> pulls out into a, I believe it's a queen size bed. I, I rarely pull that out. I usually am up top unless I'm using the fireplace. And then next to you is a hammock chair, which is the jump seat for driving down the road. Um, this oh. attaches back over on that side. I would never have guessed that was a chair. <laughs> and it's big enough that you can actually um, spread or uh, lay down in it. So it's either for my jump seat going down the road or it's the seat to watch television. And I don't watch TV, but I watch a lot of movies. And mm -hmm. so this is the extra chair for somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's see, it goes right up there. These cabinets, they came out of a, someone's bathroom. I found them on Marketplace. They were an ugly brown color. And so I painted them and put some new knobs. And I just love them because they're, they're colorful. They're beautiful. Thank you. Really, really beautiful. And then I bought this, again, on Marketplace out of somebody's RV. And I bought it before I had a bus or knew where I was going to put it or anything. I just put it in my garage until I had a place for it. So it's, I've got a, a nice oven and a three burner top and works really well. And then I've got like a little oh rollout. My. Yeah, yeah. Little rollout pantry. Well, that is, this is, I see a lot of really good quality uh, craftsmanship and a lot of beautiful art. So do you have a background in either? Yes, I, I have been, um, well, I've been coloring on the wall since I was three, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us stopped, but yes, apparently you didn't. <laughs> apparently I didn't, yeah. But yeah, I, I do a lot of gourd art and things. This is my biggest project ever. In fact, when all of this was finally done, I sat up on the, the edge of my bed and I looked forward and I went, this is the nicest fort I have ever built, you know? And yeah. I, I started to cry. I was like, I can't believe I did this, yeah. you know? So I don't have a construction background other than remodeling and things that I would do it, you know, at home or something. But, you know, anybody can learn anything. If I can do yeah. this, then yeah. anybody can learn anything. Yeah. The refrigerator is a, almost a full-size fridge. It's not an RV fridge, but it is a 12-volt fridge. Oh. Yeah, so it runs off all my, my solar, and I haven't had any trouble with it as long as I have some sunshine to continue to charge my batteries. Right. And how so, much solar do you have? I have 600 watts on the roof, and I have two 1300 amp hour lithium batteries. So I have plenty to store. I haven't had any trouble yet. And then, of course, a girl's got to have a closet. <laughs> well, yeah. 
<laughs> we all do. Yes. Yeah. You could argue that the girls in particular. Yes. And then these stairs came out of um, a bunk bed I found on Marketplace. And I cut the bottom stair off and they, they were perfect height. And they're attached with a variety of different clasps. And each and each things. one is a drawer. Each one is a drawer. That's my dresser. Oh, the doors. Um, my walls are all antique doors. And so these two came out of an old 1800s hotel. And I, they were my headboard and footboard, but I love them. So I brought them with me and turned them into walls. But this one has a 22 bullet hole in it. Oh my. <laughs> that one uh, I found on Marketplace and it reminded me of my grandmother, that pink door. So composting kind of toilet, no compost black tank. Correct. I have a gray tank under the sink. There are all kinds of woodwork or wood burning um, like it, oh. by the bathroom um, that I put in just as kind of uh, put in just for fun. So, um, you know, like little surprises that somebody might see. <laughs> whimsical. Whimsical. That's the word I've that's, been looking that's for. That's it. Yes. Whimsical. The um, electrical was all hanging loose, you know, so I had to figure out a way to cover up all those ugly wires. And there's a lip underneath uh, the panels. And so I cut some um, three quarter inch plywood and then I put a 45 on it and tucked that lip on the other side and they fit in there just perfect to hide all that ugliness. And I'm not a cabinet maker, so I did baskets, <laughs> shelves and baskets. I problem solve in my sleep, I guess, because I would go to sleep thinking, okay, what am I gonna do with that space? Or where am I going to put my drinks? And so, um, I built this cabinet and I used um, dryer vent pieces <laughs> for my cup holders and they fit perfect. Those big giant mugs that we all like so well. Yeah. So, but yeah, I would problem solve in the middle of the night and I'd wake up in the morning and go, okay, now I know what I'm going to build next. And a lot of it was just scrap wood I had. Yeah. And I'm a gourd artist. So I, I did this during COVID, just all of these might not be able to see them very well in the, they all have little lights inside. And so at night you can see all the little designs and they light up. So now we're going to take a look around on the outside. And one thing I wonder is, do you get a lot of heat and cold going through all the windows? Um, it's, it's airy, <laughs> <laughs> but I have the windows. I didn't replace the windows. I didn't take them out and, and, um, on purpose. I just didn't, just didn't, but I have a couple sticks on some of those that aren't quite latched, and I just kind of shoved those up inside there. Most of my heat loss are on these stairs, yeah, yeah. so I take that long um, curtain and I bring that to the top of the stairs, and this turns into like an ice box. But he, I, I didn't want to cover up too many windows. I just, I like being able. Yes. To, I like the light. Uh -huh. I might lose heat. But that's okay. Yeah. Well, you got the wood stove. So. Yes. So you put out a uh, little table out here. I did. Yes. This was a queen size headboard I got off Marketplace. And I cut the legs off and um, put a couple things on it. It folds up flat when I'm going down the road, obviously, and the chains and everything come off. And then I, I lock it in place. But then I always have a table. And the artwork here on the outside, you did all that? I did all that. Oh, Those wow. are mostly decals. I didn't have a budget for painting, so I thought, what's the next best thing? And so I would save and uh, buy the bigger decals. And then the cat has two catios. She's got one here. Catio. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a catio here, and then she's got one over on the, the uh, driver's side, out the driver's window. Those, of course, come down. They fold flat when I'm going down the road. And she loves them. I see the huge tires. Of course, this, these are com big commercial tires. Yes. So that raises the question of operating costs on, on a schoolie? Yes. Well, they're brand new shoes. She just got them um, a couple weeks ago. They're about $500 a piece. And the cost of operating it, fuel, um, oil uh, changes, maintenance? Uh, oil changes are done by my friend John when I oh. go home because he knows all about um, this engine. So that's a cost that is kept to a minimum. Fuel costs? Yeah, that's yeah. a sacrifice. <laughs> you know, so I get 8.2 miles per gallon. It's diesel. You know, it was a sacrifice that I was willing to make because I wanted something um, homey. 
And I noticed you got a whole bunch of uh, tools here. <laughs> I do. Of course, if you did the whole build yourself, you had to. Yes, and I, it was hard to choose what I wanted to bring with me. The bed is sitting on uh, two bookshelves and then a great big workbench, which you can't see. It's clear in the back with more drawers. And I just, I cut them all the same height and made a frame and then put some supports in the middle. I do have a porch in back and then it's usually I have a, a bin of firewood that I carry with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I have two propane tanks actually, one for the stove and uh, on-demand water heater. My shower's outside. And then I put my bike on the back and it's kind of my second transportation. And everybody wants to know what these are. I don't know if you know what these are. No. So this bus came from Snohomish and they're sanders. So inside I have a button um, that I can push if it's icy or, or I get stuck in the snow or something and sand drops out. It looks like a, oh. yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why there's two of them. And um, there's no sand in there now because I did use them at home one year when I got stuck in a driveway. But it looks like a ground up kind of glass, you know, almost like an obsidian or something that doesn't huh. cake. So the first decal I did was that one. On the roof? On, on the, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's the biggest one of the bus and the hardest one to put on because it was like seven feet long. And so I could have started with something smaller. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, Renee, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. It's amazing. Just really fantastic. Thank you. It was my pleasure. So folks, if you need, I'm sure you got some great ideas here about what you can do with yours and how, your rig and personalize it and makes it as whimsical <laughs> as you can want it to be. Lots of great ideas. Thank you so much. So folks, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now. Bye.